Thank you so much, James, and welcome into the September 4th edition of the Coaches Show, the second Coaches Show of this uh, 2021 to 2022 school year. And uh, we've got a lot going on, not only this week, but this weekend in sports, so let's get right into it. Earlier this week, uh, Team Tennis hosted the Texas High Tigers, and I know Coach Tony Martinez going into that contest said that uh, it'd be a tough contest versus Texas High. He, I know under his tenure that they've uh, struggled against Texas High, and we're no doubt hoping for similar results versus Mount Pleasant when they beat the Tigers uh, last Tuesday, 19-0. to But uh, Coach Martinez said he just wanted his team to fight something that you kind of spoke similarly about during the week in the contest against Lovejoy, just to keep fighting, uh, never give up, never relent, because uh, facing such a great team at this point in the season is really good uh, experience for uh, potentially facing greater foes down the line. But then uh, moving over to volleyball, the coach Bailey Dorner's Lady Cats volleyball team on Tuesday had a pretty good day uh, winning their contest. And then Friday as well, they uh, lost set one. They took on the Edgewood Lady Bulldogs in Edgewood last night at 4.30 p.m. Uh, lost set one before rebounding to take set two to tie it up at 1-1. They lost set three to be behind 2-1, to one, but then won sets four and five in pretty dominating fashion to win the come-from-behind victory in the five-set thriller over the Edgewood Lady Bulldogs. The win for the Lady Cats volleyball team gives them a season record of 13-10, and 10, and next up they will be back at home on Tuesday when they host the Pleasant Grove Hawks. And worth noting as well is that next Friday when the Wildcats football team are in Kaufman taking on the Lions, the Lady Cats volleyball team will be playing their first district contest versus Mount Pleasant. So a very busy time for volleyball. And uh, one thing I did want to note is that uh, the Lady Cats volleyball team were at home last night versus the Edgewood Lady Bulldogs. But uh, one thing worth noting is that this was the first time that they had played at home since their season opening contest uh, a try match against North Lamar <coughs> and Sherman on August 10th. Originally, the Lady Cats were set to play at home last Tuesday versus Quinlan Ford, but the Panthers had to pull out due to the coronavirus, so the homecoming, so to speak, was uh, all too sweet for the volleyball team. And then uh, last but certainly not least was cross country. Uh, last Friday, they also, like the Wildcats football team, well, not also, but they were in Kaufman doing the Kaufman run with the Lions at the Invitational 5K and taking on a lot of uh, tough 5A and 6A schools. They did not perform as well as they did in the uh, Commerce Tigers Invitational, but uh, still not a bad contest in any way. And this week they have off before next Saturday, they will be taking part in their first District Invitational in Hallsville, which will no doubt be a tough contest as uh, the uh, Hallsville Bobcats just outranked the uh, Sulphur Springs Wildcats in uh, cross country last weekend. And then uh, last but certainly not least, before we uh, start talking about uh, the football game last night is college football. College football got underway last weekend, but uh, it is truly out in spades this weekend as the first contest we've got on the day is the University of Oklahoma hosting Tulane. That game was originally set to be in New Orleans at Tulane, but due to Hurricane Ida, that game was since moved to Norman and still has its 11 a.m. kickoff time, but Tulane will be the designated home team. And the University of Oklahoma is favored to beat the Tulane Green Wave by 32 points, and that game will be on ABC. Next game up is uh, something of a Southwestern Conference rivalry renewed in Rice and Arkansas, as the Razorbacks will be hosting the Rice Owls at uh, Razorback Stadium, Memorial Stadium, at 1 p.m. on ESPN Plus, the Razorbacks are favored heavily and favored to win by 19 and a half right now. And then the first game of uh, Coach Steve Sarkeesian, new head coach at the University of Texas, his tenure will begin today in a ranked match between the Longhorns and the University of Louisiana, Ragin' Cajun. The Longhorns come into the game ranked 21 in the nation, and Louisiana is not too far behind at 23. The Longhorns favored to win by nine right now. And that game will kick off at 3.30 p.m. Central Time on Fox. And then uh, also going back to a Southwestern Conference rivalry renewed and is that the Texas Tech Red Raiders will be in Houston taking on the Houston Cougars. That game will not be at Houston Stadium. Stadium. It will instead be at the Houston Texans Energy Stadium. And uh, should be a good contest between two former Southwest Conference foes, and that game is set to kick off at 6 p.m. on ESPN with the Cougs favored to win by a point and a half right now. 
Uh, Baylor, the Baylor Bears will be making the uh, pretty short trip to San Marcos. I say short, still about 100, 100 plus miles. But they will be in San Marcos today, or tonight, at 6 p.m. when they take on the Texas State Bobcats at 6 p.m. on ESPN+. The Bears are favored by almost two touchdowns at 13 and a half. And then uh, three more games to point out. The SMU Mustangs will begin their season tonight when they host Abilene Christian, the Wildcats, at 6 p.m. on ESPN+. SMU favored in a big way by almost five touchdowns. And that game will be at uh, 6 p.m. on ESPN+. And then the, uh, the big game for tonight is uh, for all you college football fans, in case you just need something to do at 6.30 p.m. tonight, the uh, University of Georgia Bulldogs and the Clemson Tigers will be playing each other. Georgia comes into the game number five overall and Clemson number three. So a top five contest on week one. Not a bad way to get this college football season really underway. Clemson is currently favored by three in the contest. And that game will kick off at 6.30 p.m. on ABC. That game not being played at Georgia or Clemson, but instead the Carolina Panthers, Bank of, Bank of America Stadium. And then the last contest worth noting tonight will be the Texas A&M Aggies, who come into the season ranked number six in the nation. And they will be hosting Kent State. Uh, Jimbo Fisher and company no doubt will be having a title aspirations after a very successful season last year in which they were able to get a New Year's, New Year's Six Bowl win and uh, no doubt if they can get over the humps of teams like Alabama, Auburn, LSU, you know stalwarts of the SEC West, chances are they, they no doubt have their eyes set on something much bigger like an SEC championship and I know uh, I can bet that the Texas A&M fans would love to uh, win that SEC championship and uh, potentially do it before Texas and OU, two of their big former rivals, come into the conference so they can say, hey, look what we've done in the past 10 years. But uh, that's all I've got for college football. Um, you know, we've got old rivalries renewed, a number of ranked matchups, and most importantly, the fall 2021 college football season is underway. But when we return after a few messages from our sponsors, we'll be talking last night's game in Lovejoy versus the Lovejoy Leopards. So joining me today is Wildcats football head coach Greg Owens. Coach Owens, sorry for not introducing you in the uh, the introduction segment. It's okay. But uh, let's talk about the reason for the season, Wildcats football. The Wildcats dropped game two of their fall 2021 season last night when they traveled to the DFW Metroplex to take on the Lovejoy Leopards. The Wildcats fought hard but ultimately could not keep up with the Leopards team that has title aspirations and is ranked number eight in 5A Division II in Texas, according to Dave Campbell's Texas High School of Football. But coach, the first question I wanted to ask you is, uh, it's tough to beat a team like that when you fumble in the first play from scrimmage. Yeah, let me go back to, uh, I'm gonna talk about volleyball real quick. Volleyball's having, it's an awkward year. You mentioned that, their second home game uh, kind of coming up. It's been a long year for that stuff, but they've been working their tails off and doing a great job and getting ready for district play. Um, they, uh, it, it's been a strange week because when I type out the schedule every week and we send it, I mean, they've been playing Tuesdays and Fridays, and they have tournaments on Thursdays and Saturdays. And so they're at another tournament today, finishing up a tournament. So those girls have been working extremely hard, getting ready, and it's almost like you don't know they're playing because they haven't been at home and be able to see them play. So that's a difficult deal. And uh, Ross Hicks, I'm going to let everybody know, if never, maybe you've never seen a cross-country meet before, we're going to host our first that I'm aware of. We've ever hosted in Sulphur Springs. It'll be towards the end of September. I think it's the 25th. But Ross Hicks and has been working on a course out around our, our spring athletic complex around the baseball field and all that kind of area and tennis courts, and he's going to host that towards the end. So this morning when we were leaving, I was leaving coming up here. They were out running this morning, uh, getting a run in. So it's uh, they they're doing a great job. And Tony, yeah, he called a bud saw in T High. T High is a I mean, it's just a powerhouse every year. They've got a machine over there going. So uh, we, we did still a, still a game away from them or a match away from them. So uh, that, that was good on that part. But it, it was a tough one to line up against those guys, kind of like our deal last night that you mentioned. Lovejoy, <clears throat> one pole had them at number eight. Another pole's got them at number three. Well, whatever it is, they, they, they meet that billing. I'm just telling you, they got kiddos and they're loaded and uh, across the board. We walk out there and you're kind of in all of these big old kids. I mean, they got six, five kids that just keep walking out and looking at you and they can all run. So, but yeah, you're right. When, when you open a ball game and first play, you turn it over on the, whatever it was, a 20 yard line, 25 yard line, you hand it right back to them and then 
one, one, the next first snap on offense, they outrun us and they seal the edge and outrun us on the side. That's a hard way to start a ball game. So it was it was a rough night overall. Period. Uh, we just never could get anything going really on both sides of the ball. You know, I thought our kids continued to play, uh, but they they were disheartened and they were crushed. And I mean, it was it was one of those things. It just kind of you throw your hands up and you go, "What do we do here?" Uh, you know, it, we did, but they kept they played. Just ask them to keep fighting, and we're working on getting better. And that's where we are as a football team, trying to get better. We're dinged up all over the place, and I, I got lots of excuses, but I'm not going to throw excuses out there. The bottom line was we we didn't get it done, and we had a really good opponent. And uh, so our, our job every week is just trying to is to try to get better. So uh, they'll show back up Monday, and uh, and we'll go back to work. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you said you talked about that earlier during the week uh, to keep improving, keep fighting. You know, don't quit on a play. And uh, something I was going to talk about later, but uh, since you mentioned it. Um, I think that your team did show growth in the second quarter, something that you uh, thought you saw last week in the loss versus Frisco. But uh, in the second quarter, your defense was able to get a number uh, two punts and in, including an interception by Riley Hammonds. Yeah, there, there was. I mean, there, there's some positives in there. I mean, they're few and far between, really. But I mean, kids, kids battled, and and again, we're outmatched at some spots and some out out, out leveraged in some areas that we we got to get better at. And uh, but you know. I mean, we can sit here and pick it all apart on either way, but offensively, we we got to make it happen on every snap. Every kid's got to do their job, pretty much. Defensively, somebody's got to make a play, uh, you know. And so there's areas there. The Riley made a great interception. It was a great job. We cut, that's called a fox. So they threw a fast screen outside. So they throw a fast screen real quick. They block. And next time you come up, they fake it. They pump it, and then they try to throw it over your head. Riley did a good job of getting over the top of that from the safety position and getting an interception. So that was one of the high notes of the night was was his interception with that. So, uh, but it was a struggle. I mean, it was a struggle all night. You know, really, really in our kicking game to everything. So, you know, the problem is we're getting too much uh, kickoff return ex exposure. And all that, but anyway, it's uh, we're kind of getting there. I mean, we got we got lots of stuff. There's lots of stuff to really work on, but each week just trying to get better at that. So uh, we did see some improvements from last week, some areas that we pointed out and we worked on, and uh, so those are the things we continue to do. And we kind of got some guys still kind of filling in for some guys right now that are out of position, and so again. And some of those spots last night were outmatched. I mean, we'd have the whole left side of the line blocked, but we'd turn one guy loose on the right. Well, he messes the entire play up. So th those are things where everybody kind of has to make sure we're on, we're on point and all that. So uh, we just never could really get clicking offensively. Hit one shot there, I think, in, in, the, in the second half to the, one of the Fields boys and, and, and got a ball over the top of them. But uh, we just was not. You know, just like you push in this drawer, this one pops out over here. So just little things. And when you come up trying to get something going in the first, almost getting the first down, we come up just short. So now it's fourth and two. Well, do you give it to them on another short field or do you try to go for it right there? We get a pass in and we, we, we catch a ball and we got our knee down. Well, that kills another first down. So that that was just kind of the woe is me stuff going on first half for us. And, and then they kind of pulled their big boys out a little bit and put their twos in. And we were more competitive with those guys. Uh, going at that point. So, but anyway, yeah, it, it was discouraging. Our guys were discouraged, but again, they'll bounce back and they'll know this has nothing to do with our district or anything else. But and it was a difficult, difficult opponent to to face in that those times. Yes, you're absolutely right, Coach. And uh, you kind of spoke on this a minute ago, but uh, one thing I did want to note is that just like you were saying, uh, giving a good field position to a, a very potent offense like Lovejoy is never easy, but a number of times on the night uh, Lovejoy did start with uh, on the Wildcat side of the 50. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's hard to do. I mean, put your defense in a bind right there. So, you know, it was just one of those things that uh, we, we started with putting into the wind, all that kind of stuff. So we can't, we can't get a great punt to get the thing out of there. Uh, and then they got a great return guy, so if he, we're punting it to him, then all of a sudden he's got it and he's bringing it back across the 50 again, then they're just taking their long shots with it. So they're an explosive team. They're an extremely good football team, and uh, I don't know what else to say about that. Yeah, I was, uh, was going to mention uh, Kyle Parker, number four, the wide receiver. He's very talented, I, but I was thinking that we would be talking about Jackson Lavender a lot on the night, but it seemed like Kyle Parker was the one who showed out last yeah, night. Yeah, I mean, and both those guys are talented guys. I mean, and we're talking about number two and then number four. Uh, the, those two guys are really good. I mean, but the Parker kiddo, return guy, I mean, running back, I mean, they got all kinds of spots they do with him. So uh, he, he's really good. 
And uh, the Lavender kid, the same thing. The Lavender kid had a pretty big night as well, uh, moving the ball around. So they, they've, got, they've got weapons, and they know how to get it to them. When we return from a commercial break, we'll be talking more about the Wildcats' second game at Lovejoy. So, Coach, you, uh, last time I'll uh, ask you about uh, mental mistakes on this segment, but uh, you mentioned last week how mistakes and turnovers uh, could be exploited by a talented team like the Raccoons, and we saw something similar uh, in the first quarter when a, uh, a punt block, or yes, a punt block resulted in uh, Matthew Mitchell, quarterback and also punter, having to scramble get on top of it, but then being tackled in the end zone for a safety, and then, of course, kicking the ball right back to Lovejoy. Yeah, it's, it's easy for fans to see the physical mistake. So that actually was a, a ball snapped over his head. And uh, so he just it kind of – so the, the, those things happen. So we're still breaking in some guys. So I go back to, you know, I'm not picking on this kiddo, but he, he's doing the best he can right now, and it's a tough situation. So those, those are hard deals. Everybody – that you don't think about the long snapper, you don't think about the holder, you don't think about those things until things go bad. Uh, but those are tough spots and, and tough places to deal with, and you got tired kiddos, and, and the focus there has to be really good. So, uh, but no, that was a, that was a high snap, and Matthew just did the best he could. Didn't give up seven. Unfortunately, you know, fortunately, we just gave up two. But uh, but anyway, that that was a hard deal right there. So yeah, I mean, but the physical stuff, you see the fumble, you see that, you see a drop ball, you see a missed tackle, those things. But we did have some. You know, we, we continue to, to focus on our focus on the field, what our responsibilities are. Uh, you know, but we got some blown routes last night, quarterback. So sometimes it looks like the quarterback, what's he doing? Well, the receiver didn't run the right route. I mean, so everything that's designed that way. So that happened a few times last night, guys not getting signals or guys not, not running the right route. So th those things kind of blow up in your face. And again, you know, last night, yardage on offense was hard to come by. So we, you can't have those mental mistakes you know, doing all that. So, you know, and defensively, it's still, it's not necessarily about blowing the coverages. It, some of it's just a technique type thing of guys not getting focused, not getting the right leverage, which meaning basically getting lined up in the right spot over someone uh, so that, so from the get go, they don't have, they can already pin us. So there's some things like that. We've got to get better and they've got to understand that. And that's part of this preseason stuff, playing through those things. And that's what we'll point out in video on Friday morning, on Monday morning. Since it's Labor Day, we do have practice that morning from 8 to 11. Uh, we'll go through that stuff. And that, that's the stuff. they got to learn to play through, uh, especially guys that aren't experienced, learn to play through uh, when you're tired, you're mentally fatigued, how do I get lined up? How do I stay focused? How do I run the right route? All those kind of things. So you, you practice, 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 but there's nothing like game experience, uh, you know, in doing that, so that's what we're pointing out, and that's what we're that's what we're preaching to them last night too. As we the game got out of control, hey guys, this is not about you know the game right now. This is about you getting better on every play. So that's what we kept preaching, kept preaching, kept preaching, and you know. And so those are the things we're evaluating as coaches now. Did you make the adjustment that we made at halftime to fix some of that kind of stuff? So and and then, and then just the urgency when you play somebody. I'll take my guys on a punt team, for example. You know, they're teeing off on us and they're coming. Well, can we make the adjustment? A couple, couple of guys went brain dead and didn't block the right guy. All right? Or they're not taking the right angle. What does it take for me to get to block this guy? So them understanding the game and what this opponent's bringing to me right now and how I'm going to counter that and how I'm going to play this kiddo. Because some of them, it's fast in your face. Some, some of them, it's slow readers. You've got to be able to adjust that as a player and learn how to do that. So, again, that's what non-district games are for. That's what this season's for. And that's what we continue to preach to our kiddos. So, you know, we're not going to beat them up. Nothing like this is fun. I had a game like this in college one time, and I told some guys the other day, this game got blown. Is blown out. Well, we came back. We didn't even watch the video. Back that day, we were watching VHS. Coach said, "Let's go." He took us outside. He had a shovel in his hand. We went and buried the tape. You know, basically put it there. We're, we're not going to bury this tape, all right? But we're going we're going to learn from it. But in a sense, it is. Hey, forget about it. Let's go. Let's move on. You know. But yeah, it hurts your pride. And yeah, it's disappointing. And yeah, it was a blowout ball game from the get go. And and those aren't any fun. So how are we going to respond as a football team? What's our character going to look like? Are we going to come back and go to work, uh, those are the things that our kids will do. And we got to get some of these guys healthy and get them back on the field at the same time. And uh, you were talking about this a moment ago, but uh, two things I wanted to ask you about was uh, your halftime speech in the locker room and then uh, halftime adjustments. Yeah, like Coach, so, you know, so really offense, defense guys, they take care of their adjustments on each side of the ball. They know what the plan is, what their guys. So what happens is we come in for halftime, I talk to the guys, make sure everybody's focused in on what we've got going on. 
so calm everybody down if we need to calm down or because they're too high or they're too low, whatever it might be, pump them up a little bit. Um, do that. Offense, defense guys, they break up. Their staffs break up and they talk as a whole what's going good, what's going bad, what, what's our problems. They talk as a staff and then each one of those breaks up individually and they go and talk to their position guys and they make adjustments. And typically I come back out. So they all come back to me right before we go back out. Okay, what's our challenge for today? Well, let's no Vince Lombardi, rah, 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 let's go sick them. No, it's about, hey, guys, you got heart, play with heart. Continue to play with heart. Understand what we're doing here and getting better. And so I thought they responded to all that stuff well. You know, again, sometimes all the adjustments don't always work. Uh, but, again, sometimes it's a technique thing. Sometimes it's a kid just getting that experience that I just talked about. So those are the things. So those are the improvements we're looking for with kiddos, especially when coaches are sitting down right now evaluating video. All right, did this kid get better? What, what do I got to do to get him better? Can he play for us? Do we need to get somebody else in this spot? So those are all the things that we continue to work on. And, and some of those things you're handcuffed with because we do have injuries here, there, and again, like I mentioned earlier in the show, you know, we're sliding some guys around, playing some guys out of position. Uh, so. That those things you just got to deal with. It's high school football. We don't get to recruit them. We got guys here, and when you when your guys go down, we don't get to go to the practice roster and bring more. Well, there's no more to go bring. I mean, here we are. We got to figure out how to make this thing work and get going until we can get all these guys back and get them healthy and get them going in the same direction. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And uh, one player who got a touchdown against the Wildcats last night, um, Peyton Pierce, the Allen transfer. You can't exactly go over. Literally a football yeah. throw over to the next town and get another player. Hey, Alan's not sending us any guys. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. Uh, I always. I'm from Allen, Texas. For those who don't know, so Allen's literally the next town over from Lovejoy, and I always knew Lovejoy was close. But I mean, it's literally a long punt away from Allen, yeah. Texas. Yeah, it's, it's just yeah, it's a mile or two, whatever. It's just right there. So it's all right there on those guys. But that's kind of the way the Metroplex is. Things are always kind of shifting, and you know, it's just kind of a unique situation. And I'm not going to speak too much to it. I don't know too much about it, but I do know, you know, they got a lot of kiddos in, and it's just kind of, you know, they're just kind of jumping around over there. But they got some good looking cats. Yeah, they sure do. And uh, when we return from commercial break, we will wrap up talking about the Lovejoy loss and then uh, move on to talking about the game next Friday in Kaufman. We'll be right back. So, Coach, the uh, I guess the last thing I'll ask you about uh, the uh, loss last night would be uh, the running game. So, uh, or sorry, two more questions. The running game. Uh, the running game's kind of struggled to find some rhythm, and of course, it's all be notably it's it's difficult when you get down quickly two scores or what have you, but uh, how, how can you moving forward st incorporate the running game so that they can continue to kind of find a rhythm? Well, that's always a focus. I mean, we're always trying to find ways to run the ball. I mean, and so, you know, we, we've had, we, again, we got a couple of running backs now dinged up and all that kind of stuff, so that makes it even harder. We've got different linemen we're moving in and out, um, so that, that makes another tough deal. We had a, brought a couple of kids up from the JV of the night that uh, to, to play. So against a tough opponent, that just makes it harder. We've got a couple guys, that really it's their first time to really play on a Friday night there. One of them, first time ever to play offensive line. So we're filling some of those pieces in, you know. And so that's one of the things I think I alluded to earlier was like one, one time I'm watching our guys on one side of the line, we got everything blocked perfect. We think we're fixing to roll. And then here comes a guy from the back side. We miss a block on a guy on the back side. And he blows it up. And we're fixing to have a really nice running lane. So. Those are things. It's always offense is you're trying to get a mix. You'd like to say you're 50 50, run pass, keep them off balance, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, we need to run the ball, so we run the clock, you know, so we three three punts and out, and here's the clock. So that's where we kind of got into last night. We could not run it, could not move them. Uh, we talked about our, in our show on Wednesday that, you know, they junk up the box. I mean, their whole thing, and they're really good at that. And they got really good players in there junking up the box, so active. And so some of that stuff came to light last night, and they're just crossing face, which sometimes it seems he goes all the way from C gap to A gap back inside. That's called a long stick. You know, and those things right there are hard on young linemen to try to figure out and go, and especially with the athletic guys doing those things. So those things junk it up, mix it up. Um, so, you know, we're still trying to learn from that. So we're, we're just not a group that's going to come up and road grade you. We're just not. We're not big enough to go do that. Um, so we've got a position. We've got to get it. We've got to hit a crease, continue to get that. 
and you know, usually, probably in any any football team, I would say the all unless you've got all guys returning, the offensive line is the last one to kind of get it all together. Sometimes they're just at a disadvantage. Uh, it's just the learning. It's they're in this catch mode. You know, guys are attacking them, so defenses can junk all that stuff up, mess mess with their head, and then it's still a physical game too that you have to have. So. They're coming along. It's, it's going to be okay. It'll be fine. We get a mix, and we get our we get our fast screen game in. We get our other stuff, but we got to start catching the football. We we got to our quarterbacks have to have calm and poise and stay in the pocket, you know, and you get the ball to them. And we have to catch it as receivers. We got to catch the ball. We can't be blowing routes. We can't do that stuff. We got to make plays when we can make plays. And that's just where we haven't done anything the last two games is really make the plays we needed to make to keep the chains and get them going and get the defense on their heels. Because right now, like you said earlier, it's three and outs. Three and outs, their defense is fresh. Our defense is tired. That's not good for the whole ball game. So those are things we're still working on. Consistency, I go back to our first week's show, consistency, consistency, consistency. We've got to do that. We've got to try to be consistent and making things, doing things right, and continuing to work. So, I mean, we still got eight more ball games. So, I mean, we got, it's a long season. So don't, don't everybody go crawl in a hole somewhere. I mean, it's going to be okay. Again, we've got to keep working. That's what we've got to keep pushing these kiddos uh, to keep working and getting after it. And uh, so, but it'll get there. It, it'll come with a mix. Again, got to get them healthy. And then uh, moving over to next Friday's game. So you and your team will be back on the road taking on the Kaufman Lions. Yeah. Um, so Kaufman, excuse me, we didn't get to play those guys last year um, because of the, all the changes with the COVID stuff. And, and one of the games we had dropped 4A and below, got to start earlier, 5A and 6A, had to wait and delay. So that's one of the games that got changed. This might have been a replacement game, I think, for Hallsville. And then, then we got put on COVID. We didn't even get to play Hallsville. So, Long story, um, Kaufman, J uh, Jeremy Burleson, was a co he, he coached here in Sulphur Springs at a time, so there's a connection with him. Great guy, does a super job with those guys over there. Uh, they're a talented group. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they won the seven on seven this summer, so they got some explosive kiddos. They can go get it. Uh, so they, they've got some confidence from that and a little moxie from that right there. So they're going to throw it around last night. Uh, they beat Crandall last night, which is one of our district opponents. Uh, so, so, yeah, it, it'll be a great game. I've not seen video on those guys yet. I don't know. Um, and, again, we didn't play them last year. So it's kind of, okay, I don't know what he's got. I know what he had a few years ago um, when we played them at their place. So we're going back there too. So he does a great job. I mean, they, they do a fantastic job there. We'll, we'll get to break, breaking down the game plan this week, see what we got, and, and you strap it back up, you get on the bus, and here we go again. So another opportunity to play, another opportunity for kiddos to get out there and get effort, and for us to build a little more character, and let's go. Let's see what we, see what we got. So it's a challenge with that kind of stuff, because, and that's what we're going to do with it. And uh, so we'll see. We'll see what they got. Again, I don't know, because I haven't looked at the video from them, but I will say this. I mean, Coach Burson's class act. I mean, that, he's done a great job there. His father-in-law was Dickie Meeks. A lot of people know him from coaching around East Texas, and they're just they're just super people. And uh, but anyway, it'll, it'll be fun to see those guys. Sometimes you like to play your friends. Sometimes you don't. But uh, this will be good. He, he does a super job, and and a classy thing they're going to do. They're going to have a special ceremony. I think it's going to be about 7.05 or 7.10, honoring all veterans, all emergency personnel, everything else. I know even our security officers are going to, going to get recognized. So it's a pregame ceremony just to do that uh, for, for the community and all, all the all the first responders and everyone else. So it's going to be a big deal. He's been working. He, he called me about that thing, I think, about a month ago. So that they put a lot of time and effort. And I mean, there's going to be F-16s flying over there. I mean, it's going to be a, it's going to be a show. So it, it's a cool deal. And he's thinking about other things. He's teaching his kids. Here's how you honor these folks that are serving and sacrificing. And so I'm excited for our kids to be a, bit, be a part of that, too. So it'll be a neat day and all that stuff. And, and we'll play a high school football game in the middle of all that. And so, uh, sounds like this uh, next Friday's game will be back at 7.30 p.m. kickoff? Yes, sir. It's 7.30. So, so most Metroplex schools, so why the game was at 7? Well, most of these Metroplex schools play at 7 because they're right beside each other. I mean, it's a 30-minute trip. Well, what's hard for people that live out here, we are on the extremes of our whole district, it's hard to make those trips and those travels because, I mean, we saw our band, I, don't, I, don't, I think they made it sometime in the first quarter. I mean, it's just we have buses that are on routes. We have drivers taking kiddos. We got all those things. We try to plan our school days off when we have longer trips. Uh, but it, it, it's just a tough deal. When, you have, when you're traveling over an hour and a half, it's hard to make a 7 o'clock game. But 
thought we had that worked out at the beginning, but evidently we didn't. So uh, they, they had it called for seven, so we got to go play at seven. It's at their place. So, uh, But I believe that everything else should be on on – on a normal time at 7.30. That's what our district minutes have agreed on, and that's what we agreed on with, with Kaufman. Um, there's a difference if you start looking at the schedule. There's a game in there. We have a Thursday night game, and I can't – I don't know if it's Forney or North Forney that, that we're playing at the end of the schedule uh, because they have, they got two schools in one stadium, so they have to kind of alternate schools. It's one of those conflicting nights where it's a Friday night deal. So we'll play a Thursday night game with the Forney then. Uh, but, I think game nine maybe, so in the end there. So anyway, that's some stuff that's going on with that. So, yep, I apologize. It's just one of the one of those deals that sometimes the schedules and the times and all that stuff, and it really is conflicting sometimes with sub-varsity games too. We try to play all those or start all those at 530 so parents can get there. And uh, But it's still sometimes that doesn't work out either. Depends on if you got one game, two game, all that kind of stuff. But we'll try to do our best every week to keep get everybody caught up and know what's going on and, and those times and continue to relay that through you guys. And thank you so much for coming on to this uh, September 4th edition of the Coaches <coughs> Show as the Wildcats did lose their second contest of the season last night, but they will be back on the road next Friday in Kaufman when they take on the Lions and that's September 10th at a 7.30 p.m. kickoff time. And uh, best of luck to the Wildcats, and thank you so much for coming on, Yes, Coach. sir. Appreciate you guys. And uh, shooting video, as always, is Doug Hasten. Running the board is James Terry, making everything you hear possible. And... Uh, as your interviewee, I'm Ross Lebinski. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you all next time.